Hi everyone, uh, my name is Michael. I'm an incoming MD PhD student at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, I recently graduated from Caltech uh, with a bachelor's in physics. And today we'll be walking through my AMCAS application during the 2020-21 cycle. Um, hopefully this will give you some insight into how I applied to medical school and specifically to MD PhD programs. Um, and you know, if you're a current applicant or someone that is going to be applying to medical school, school soon, um, I hope this will be a helpful resource for you guys. Okay, so this is kind of what the application looks like. Um, so I downloaded this from the online um, AMCAS portal. Um, I, I kind of uh, got rid of a lot of like my self-identification information. So for example, my legal name, um, all that, you know, fun stuff. Um, but one thing I want you guys to pay attention to is the submission date. Um, so it's really important that you submit your primary application, which is this whole thing here, um, as soon as possible. Um, so I think for us, it like the portal opened up like May 28th or something of, of 2020. Um, and I, you can see I kind of submitted it the, uh, the day after. Um, so you really want to get that, you know, your primary application submitted as fast as possible because it takes a couple of weeks for them to review your application and, ma and make sure your grades line up with your transcript things like that. So you can see it took a little bit of time. Um, I can't do the math here, but it took maybe like two ish weeks. Uh, and normally you can expect about a month for them to go over your application and process it. And uh, this process uh, date is when you can officially, your application can officially be sent out to uh, medical schools that you're applying to. Um, yeah, so there's no information here, I guess, besides that. Um, so let's just keep going down. Um, okay, here, so languages is pretty straightforward. Um, English is my native language, I guess. Um, I took uh, a lot of years of Spanish, I think like six years or something. Um, and I, frankly, I feel like my Spanish is better than my Chinese at this point, because um, I haven't spoken Chinese in a really long time. Um, yeah, childhood information. So I'm a pretty standard applicant, I would say. So um, I grew up in the Bay Area and, and things like that. So um, I'm not like underserved, I'm not disadvantaged. So it's like a, you know, I, I think it's a, just a normal, you know, pretty, I mean, just, uh, yeah, it's pretty normal application. Um, yeah, I have parents, I have siblings, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is kind of just like the basic stuff here. And, and let's now dive into um, kind of the classes that I put on my transcript and basically what my grades look like um, when I was applying to medical school. Um, so you can see uh, right off the bat, uh, I only took uh, classes at Caltech. Um, so just as of some background information, I didn't do any post back programs. I went straight in and I applied at the end of my junior year. Um, and so this was during my freshman year of college. So one thing that probably draws a lot of people's attention is that um, basically all of my courses, they're pass fail. Um, and that's because the first two terms, the, so the first two quarters of Caltech uh, are all pass fail for all freshmen and there are no shadow grades or anything like that. It's just all pass fail. Um, so that was kind of just meant for, you know, kind of Caltech freshmen to be able to get adjusted to the course load um, and things like that. So that's why all of these are just passes, I guess. Um, and all of these are just pretty standard courses. So, you know, Gen Chem, um, I took OCHEM as a freshman because um, initially I actually wanted to be a chem major. So I was kind of swapping around a little bit. Um, and a lot of these are just kind of like, just, you know, introductory math and stuff like that. Um, I did take some seminar courses, like, you know, I took a biology seminar course, um, a chemistry one as well. Um, and yeah, these, these are just pretty standard. I wouldn't say I did like particularly well in these classes. I think I had some adjustment phase as well. Um, but it was just pretty standard. Um, so you can feel free to pause the video if you want to take a look um, at this stuff a little bit closer, uh, but just moving right along. So freshman year, uh, spring quarter uh, is when, is the first time that we basically had uh, basically grades uh, for Caltech. Um, so you can see most of these are just, uh, so I got mostly A's. Um, these are just, these classes were only offered on pass fail. So I didn't really have an option there. Um, and yeah, just, you know, just finishing up my core requirements, uh, finishing up my physics coursework, physics lab, all pretty standard. So, uh, freshman year that it wasn't really too interesting. I think I was just getting a lot of my core requirements out of the way. Um, in sophomore year. So 
I had already declared as a applied physics major um, at the end of my freshman year. So going into sophomore year, I knew that that was what my major was. Um, you can see, you know, I was starting to take more advanced uh, physics courses. So for example, this was a advanced physics lab. Um, this one was a, a physics course uh, intended for physics majors. Uh, so I was taking that during the fall of my uh, sophomore year. Um, I also had no com uh, computing experience at this time. Um, so I wanted to, you know, basically learn some programming and stuff like that. So I took introduction to computer programming. Um, again, it was only offered on pass fail, so I could only report pass fail. Um, typically this was a freshman class, so I was a little bit behind, but I still wanted to learn a little bit about CS. Um, and I, you can see, so going into winter quarter, um, I, you know, continued with my courses, uh, did pretty okay, I think. Uh, and then I continued with CS because I really liked CS1. Um, and then spring quarter, uh, I started to, you know, starting to think about kind of my, um, you know, pre-med uh, prerequisites and stuff like that. So I, I took, for example, like, um, like the intro to cell biology class um, and things like that. Um, and again, continuing with like uh, more advanced like CS courses uh, and also like physics and stuff like that. I also took PE as well. That's not important. Um, cool. So that's the end of my sophomore year. Um, again, I think my grades, I did pretty well. Um, I tried to keep them up and, and, you know, I always thought academics was super important. Um, so I tried to, you know, really work hard on, you know, keeping my grades good. Um, okay, so junior year, uh, so this is where a lot of like the, I started taking graduate courses for, you know, in major specific courses. Um, so you can see here, uh, start of my junior year, I took uh, biochem, I took machine learning class, um, and a lot of different physics courses. So these were all graduate level courses um, that were specific for my major. Um, one interesting thing was that I took introduction to biochem um, after I took the MCAT. And so this class was actually not too horribly difficult, even though it had a, um, I guess like not the greatest reputation because um, I had already studied a lot of biochem and kind of memorized a lot of like the common metabolic pathways and things like that. Um, when studying for the MCAT, um, basically this summer between sophomore and junior year here. Um, so just kind of continuing. Uh, so I started to, um, you know, take more of my humanities requirements and fill out those core requirements. Um, continue with Spanish, you can see here. This one was actually not obligate pass-fail, but I chose to pass-fail it anyways because um, kind of like the other coursework that I was focusing on uh, was pretty difficult. So like, for example, these two classes, that was really difficult um, that quarter. Um, and then COVID hit. So spring term, uh, it was a lot of, you know, uncertainty, I would say. Um, so again, Caltech is on the quarter system. So uh, basically when I sent this ap application out in May, um, the spring quarter actually ends in the middle of June for us. So that's why a lot of these are marked current and future uh, because I had no grades to report at that time. Um, but kind of like I, you know, through this quarter and basically just the rest of, um, you know, my time at Caltech, I just kind of continue like the same general um, GPA trend so you can kind of fill in the blanks here. Um, and yeah, these are just kind of the courses I took. Um, if you guys are interested in learning more about these courses, just feel free to let me know. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of scroll slowly if you wanna pause the video and take a closer look. Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the end of my coursework. Um, Cool, yeah, you can see my high school there, I guess. And um, again, I didn't have any post back programs so I didn't like transfer school. So um, I just had one um, undergraduate school at Caltech. Great, and then you can see this is my um, GPA. So this is basically my kind of like science GPA, uh, humanities, I think GPA, and then like the overall. So it's pretty consistent over four years, which was um, or I guess three years here, because they don't have senior uh, here. But um, yeah, and that's that's my GPA. Um, MCAT is also here, so I took the MCAT once, um, again, between the um, sophomore and junior year, um, so that summer, um, and I scored a 520. So I was really happy with that score. I didn't choose to like retake it or anything like that, so um, this is kind of like my score. And um, I was in particular really happy about the bio section. 
um, because I remember kind of going into into like the application process. Um, I had taken a lot of like advanced physics coursework, but um, frankly, I felt like a lot of like the standard like biology prerequisites and like you know taking like introduction to anatomy, you know like neuroscience or psychology. Um, I I didn't really take a lot of those like fundamental courses I think during Caltech. So um, having a good biology score, I felt like kind of made up for that. Um, Ironically, I, I didn't do as well as I had hoped um, on the physics section. I'm, I'm still really happy with the score. Um, it's just I thought I, I because based on like practice tests I was I was taking um, at the time, I thought I was going to do better. But you know, again, I can't complain here. So, um, yeah, and then I didn't take anything before 2015. So, okay, cool. So that's kind of like the basic stuff, my GPA, MCAT, stuff like that. Um, now we're diving into the activity section. So for a little bit of context. Um, you can fill up to 15 different activities, three of which can be your kind of like most meaningful activities where you can elaborate on why they were meaningful to you and why they specifically encouraged you to pursue medicine. Um, you're by no means obligated to fill up all 15 activities. Um, I, I did because I felt like I had a lot to say and I want to include on my application. But um, yeah, most people I think don't actually fill out all 15. Um, so, and they're also, um, I forgot to mention, they're also listed from most recently started to least recently started. So it's not listed in terms of like most, it's not, it's not presented in terms of like, uh, you know, most meaningful first or anything like that. Um, so you can see here, um, I included just a section of like honors, awards and recognitions uh, that I received from Caltech um, and other places. So this was just, I, I kind of blanked, I, I, I scratched out a lot of like the experience descriptions. Um, but you know, here was just, it's a pretty straightforward just description of like all the things that um, I received at Caltech um, and during college. Um, this was a really cool opportunity. So I, I got contacted in, I wanna say like the middle of May or something. So literally like a couple weeks before I um, submitted my MCAS application, um, I found an opportunity to kind of do some uh, mobile app development. Um, for a lab at a school like really close to Caltech um, and the idea was that you know that would have that would be used in like the clinic to um, kind of spread awareness about like uh, women's health and things like that um, and so that was really cool because I I was really interested in kind of using technology and um, you know computing and stuff like that um, to solve uh, like clinical problems and, and, you know, kind of combine that with medicine. So this was a really cool testament of that. Unfortunately, you know, I, I started pretty late um, for that, but I still wanted to include it because I felt like it showcased a really important component of, of like who I was as an, who, as an applicant. Um, continuing, so uh, yeah, I, I was a student volunteer. Uh, so I, I worked with um, a couple of like kids, or, like high school students around like the uh, Caltech area and basically we worked with them like after school to like teach them like math and science and help them with their schoolwork um, So that's been a lot of fun. I'm still doing that right now actually um, Yeah, uh, so I shadowed at the City of Hope, um, which is like a 15-minute drive um, from Caltech uh, during the summer between my sophomore and junior uh, Yeah, sophomore and junior year um, So at the same time that I was studying for like the MCAT and things like that um, this was a really cool program because it introduced me to like academic medicine and that's the time when I really knew I was going to pursue MD-PhD because um, just that experience was incredible and um, you know this opportunity was actually set up through a collaboration by Caltech so I just applied with Caltech and then you know I got into the program so that was really cool. Um, I, I guess I used to be a ballroom dancer, so I don't think I was really good at it, but um, I really did enjoy it during um, you know my time at Caltech. I think I started around like the middle of sophomore year, I think, uh, which was really cool. Um, I'm mostly into like Latin ballroom, if you guys are interested. Um, and so, yeah, I wrote a little bit about that. Um, let's see. So, teach, so yeah, TA. Uh, so teaching assistant, that was one of actually my main um, most meaningful description, uh, most meaningful activities, sorry. Um, so you can see that I had some, you know, extra long essay on that. Um, and that was really meaningful because I basically TA'd since like every term since the middle of my sophomore year or something. 
Um, and that really helped me kind of explain concepts, very difficult like science concepts, um, to a wide variety of different students, uh, which was something I, I actually really struggled with in the past. Um, so through the process of like holding office hours and recitations, I think I learned how to better explain topics um, to different types of people. And I think that, uh, you know, it, it doesn't directly tie to medicine, I guess, but it was really helpful because I now know how to like explain really difficult top topics to like patients and things like that. Um, at least that's the hope. Um, um, yeah, so Dean's tutoring. So uh, this was a program that if you did particularly well in class, um, you could basically tutor other students that were also in that class, that taking that class like next year or the year after or something like that. So I, I was a Dean's tutor for like a couple of different courses at Caltech and just worked with students like one-on-one -on -one to like help them through courses that I'd previously taken. Um, yeah, I, I also shadowed um, at the Huntington Hospital, which is just like a, it's a private hospital, it's pretty big, um, like maybe like five to 10 minutes from Caltech. Um, and that was really cool. So that was like kind of like one of my first exposures to kind of like clinical medicine. Um, um, at that time, I was still kind of debating on whether I wanted to do medicine as like a, um, so, you know, this was really helpful and kind of like exposing me to like many different uh, fields of medicine. We got to see like, you know, even like stand over like the operating table and things like that. Um, and again, that was kind of, that was a program through Caltech. So I was really grateful for that. Um, this was uh, the second most meaningful activity. So um, I basically a couple of friends and I, we co-founded a medical nonprofit called Atria Connect. Um, and the mission of this nonprofit, which is actually still going by the way, um, is to kind of develop low cost medical technologies or not, not necessarily develop, but actually bring these technologies to low resource communities and um, kind of teach them how to use those and, and you know, uh, incorporate them into existing medical practices. Um, and so the idea is that we, you know, there's a bunch of like uh, a lot, a lot of like innovation and things like that, that are really driving down the costs of like really powerful, like diagnostic tools, therapeutic tools. Um, and so we were kind of playing like the middleman and bringing those technologies to uh, places where they really matter. Um, and so through those experiences, you know, I really learned how to like, for example, how to start a nonprofit, how to manage a business, how to like create a brand name, even on like social media. Um, I even got the opportunity to go to Haiti for a couple of weeks to actually incorporate, um, you know, kind of like some of like these medical tools um, to, you know, to, to a clinical practice in Haiti. So that was a really cool experience. Um, still really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, so. Um, so MedLife was a club at Caltech I was really involved in since basically the start of my freshman year. Um, so I wrote a little bit about that. It's, it, it was kind of like a volunteering um, community uh, club. So that was, yeah. Um, I was also, uh, so I was an associate editor in the Caltech Undergraduate Research Journal um, since my freshman year. And I had recently been promoted to editor in chief for my senior year. So kind of like right now, um, uh, starting kind of like in the spring of my junior year. So um, yeah, I wrote a little bit about that. That was great. Um, so this, so I was a um, student body representative. I, I kind of represented um, like kind of all students in a particular, like an academic um, research committee. Uh, so, you know, it's basically student led at Caltech. Um, I only did this for the first two or three years of college. Um, so I, you know, this was a, a very big time commitment, a commitment basically with, um, you know, coursework and things like that. I just felt like I didn't want to kind of continue with that. Um, so that's why it's only, I didn't last the whole time. Um, and yeah, so my research experience was probably the other big thing. Um, so I stayed in one lab, the, the Shapiro Laboratory at Caltech, um, throughout my four years, three and a half years of undergrad at Caltech. Um, you can see that here. And this was incredibly meaningful because um, that's kind of what inspired me to even start thinking about MD-PhD in the first place. I was working on really cool like technologies and using physics and uh, computer science and biomedical engineering, um, all these different principles to solve transla translational medicine related um, research questions. And that was super cool. Um, so I really appreciated that experience. Yeah. Um, was a varsity swimmer on Caltech swim team. That was only for one year. I only did that freshman year because just because of other academic priorities, I decided to stop. 
Um, but I, I swam since, you know, for over like 10 years. And, you know, I swam competitively um, in high school and middle, middle school, stuff like that. So, um, and the last one, so this was actually a high school experience. I didn't, you can see I, it actually stopped uh, before I matriculated to high school, but this was a really cool opportunity. Um, I basically worked at a research lab at UCSF um, for about two years of high school, um, working on like kind of like stem cell technologies, um, CRISPR, Cas9, stuff like that. And that's what initially got me really interested in um, kind of research in general. Um, I kind of knew the type of research that I wanted to do from this experience. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of like the 15 activities that um, I included as a part of my MCAS um, application. Uh, so you, yeah, take what you will from that. Yeah. Okay, so now we're diving into the um, essay section, I guess. So to give you a little bit of context, every applicant, whether MD or MD PhD, they have to write an essay that basically talks about, um, you know, why do you want to become a doctor? Um, and so this is like this main essay here that again, I've kind of taken out. Um, I didn't include like the actual essay, but basically the idea behind it was that um, I initially kind of came to Caltech thinking that I wanted to pursue um, kind of just a PhD route, uh, route. I didn't know that I wanted to do the MD until kind of like later on in the process. Um, and so it kind of took a unique approach because most people, um, I think, you know, they, they're very, um, they have like that hu human side, I think, of medicine, like what it means to be human. Um, and that's what initially encouraged them to become a doctor. Um, for me, I was very kind of like theoretically based and, you know, I was very analytic, very mathematically inclined. Um, and so I didn't discover that, you know, that part about using those scientific skills to actually like save human lives. Like that, I didn't kind of like really discover that until like really later on in the process. And so, my essay was really about that like process of discovery, of figuring out exactly what I want to do with those technical skills that I was learning at Caltech. Um, and that was kind of why I wanted to become a doctor. Um, okay, yeah, so that's that's that essay here. It just continues there. Um, the MD PhD essay, so that's specific for MD PhD applicants. Um, again, MD applicants only have to write this top essay. Um, so this one is about a 3000 character word essay. 3000 character essay, sorry. Um, so it's a little bit shorter, but this is basically asking like, why do you want to become a physician scientist? Like, why do you want to pursue the MD PhD specifically? Um, and so this one, I, I kind of took a similar bend, uh, you know, similar story about this. Um, so I used a different kind of like situation as I used for this one, but um, basically it was talking about um, kind of like a lot of like the similar themes. So um, I used an example of like, a specific example of when like knowing those rigorous like physics and uh, math based stuff um, actually did make an impact in the clinic. Um, and that was really cool because I could uh, see the connection of like, for example, like chaos theory that I learned in like classical mechanics and how that could actually be used to study like complex, uh, you know, lung anatomy and stuff like that. Um, so those eye-opening experiences were what really drove me to um, kind of pursue the MD PhD um, and frankly a lot of like the experience I had shattering at the City of Hope combined with my um, research experience in like the Shapiro laboratory there's just a lot of different factors that uh, made me convinced that I was pursuing the path that was right for me. Uh, research hours so you can see I, I put in a lot of research hours um, over the past like four years um, it's a lot of it was, you know, it, I really considered myself like a part-time student, part-time researcher, I think. Um, I was easily working like 20 hours a week um, in lab, um, mostly on a volunteer basis. So it's like, you know, unpaid and stuff, but uh, really it was a hassle to kind of like balance like, you know, coursework and, you know, school deadlines and clubs and all that stuff, social life um, with actually, you know, doing, you know, research and stuff. And um, that's kind of the part that's like, um, you know, it's really difficult because I think like um, getting that balance, you really need to love the research that you're doing if you're able to put in like this insane number of hours. Um, and finally, so this significant research experience essay, um, it's a 10,000 character essay specific again to MD PhD applicants. Um, and this one's just talking about like, what is your research about? So 
Um, if you remember from the activity section, I, I really only had two research um, labs that I was part of, so the Shapiro lab at Caltech, and also the, the UCSF lab as well during high school. So because there's only two labs and there's like a, this is like a 10,000 character limit. So I could really go in depth on like, why did I do this and, and that and something like that? And what were the broader implications of like the research that I was doing and give a lot of like context and explain like the research. So um, I was really appreciative of that. I think sometimes that 10,000 character can be difficult if you worked in like five different labs uh, that you know, you're trying to fit all of that information there. Uh, but yeah, that, that one was actually pretty straightforward because that you just talk about your research and you know if you're playing MD PhD, it's not it's not too bad. So you see, it's a really long essay. Um, cool. So that's kind of like the three essays. So remember, it's the um, why do you want to be a doctor? Why do you want to do MD PhD specifically? And what is your research like? Um, so here comes the letters of evaluation. Um, so uh, sorry, letters of recommendation. Um, I ultimately got seven letters of recommendation. I didn't send all seven to all of the schools that I applied to, um, but you can see there's just, you know, they're shown here. I, again, kind of redacted a lot of that information, but basically I got six from different STEM and humanity professors at Caltech. I think it was like, uh, was it like five STEM and one humanities or maybe four STEM and two humanities or something like that. And then I also got one from uh, a doctor that I worked really close with uh, when we were like working together on Atria Connect. Um, yeah, and you can see like uh, some of them I sent to a lot of schools that I applied to um, and then some of them I didn't really send too many. So. Okay, so now is probably like the interesting part that you guys are you know, probably really waiting for this. Um, so basically what schools did I apply to, which schools did I interview at, which schools did I get into and stuff like that. So I think I applied to, I sent out my primary application to 25 programs, I think. They were all MD, PhD. Um, looking at it now, maybe I sent it to 26 programs, but I felt like it was 25. So it, it's somewhere around there. Um, so again, they were all MD, PhD. I knew from the onset I was gonna apply only to MD, PhD programs. Um, so you can see them here. So the color coding regime, I the color coding scheme that I used here was, um, Yellow means I was invited for an interview, but I chose not to attend. So I basically declined their offer for an interview and obviously I was rejected. Um, no, no highlights mean I never heard back from them after I submitted secondaries. Um, so I got secondaries back from all of the schools that I applied to, minus a couple that I'll point out. Um, green means I was invited to an interview and I accepted that invitation and I actually attended that interview. Um, and for those green schools, I either put an A for accepted, uh, W for waitlisted, or um, R for rejected. So yeah, um, Baylor College uh, of Medicine, I applied, was invited, did not attend. Um, Boston University, same thing, same story. Uh, one thing about Boston, so I actually had plans, I was planning on attending uh, that interview, but uh, during the orientation process, I had learned that um, basically Boston University, as of right now, does not uh, like have a fully funded MD PhD program. So basically, uh, people that attend Boston for um, their MD PhD training, they actually do have to pay for medical school and things like that. So for me, in my financial situation, I couldn't base I couldn't afford that. So that's why I chose not to ultimately attend this interview. Um, Case Western Reserve, um, so I was invited, I attended and I was accepted into their program. I heard back I think in like January, middle of January this year. Um, Columbia, I also got accepted into, so that was really cool. Um, Duke, I was invited, chose not to attend. Um, Emory, I applied, did not, get in, did not even get invited. So um, I, I remember actually being kind of really sad about that because I, when I, when I was filling out the secondary for Emory, um, some of the research was actually really cool. And I kind of got, you know, Emory kind of grew on me uh, during that secondary application writing process, but um, unfortunately I never heard back from them. So, you know. um, Harvard Medical School, so I got accepted. Um, Harvard has this kind of unique system where they have uh, two different pathways for medical students. They have the pathways program and the um, Health Sciences and Technology or HST program. 
um, which, you know, they have different, um, they're basically different uh, ways of doing medicine and learning about medicine. Um, so I got accepted into both, into both Pathways and HST. Um, I was also offered a spot in the MD PhD class. So there's like three different things that I was admitted to for Harvard. Um, Mount Sinai, I never heard back from um, Hopkins. Uh, I heard back from in the middle of March. Uh, so I got accepted into their MSTP, which is really cool. Um, Kaiser, I declined their interview. Uh, USC, I never heard back from. So, and I, I remember submitting uh, so USC is kind of interesting because I remember submitting their secondary really really early and then like like at 7 in the morning early like not like date wise early um, and that day like at around noon I think like their program manager called me and asked if I had done like clinical volunteering like you know like uh, like you know have I worked at a hospital volunteer at a hospital which I haven't before so um, and then after that I never heard back from them so I'm not sure if that was in my favor, was in my favor, but take what you will from that. Uh, Mayo, so I applied here for a primary and this was actually one of the schools that I didn't submit a secondary for because they had basically requested all of my uh, evaluators, like the letter of recommendation writers to fill out another evaluation form. And I didn't feel like asking all of my uh, recommenders again to fill out another form for one particular school. So I ultimately chose not to submit a secondary to them. Um, NYU, never heard back from uh, Northwestern. Uh, I was invited. This was actually my first interview during the interview cycle. I remember like mid-September or something. Um, and I got waitlisted. Uh, still don't know if I got accepted or rejected as of this moment. Um, UPenn, so obviously I'm going to UPenn, so I got accepted here. Um, Stanford, I got rejected pre-interview, um, so I never got interviewed there. Um, UCI, also never got interviewed. UCLA, got accepted. Um, again, I heard back in early January, mid-January or something, so that was really cool. Um, UCSD, I declined their interview invite. Um, UCSF, I was accepted, but only into the MD program. So uh, I got waitlisted at the for their MSTP program, the MD PhD. So, uh, but I know that you know if you get an MD, you can apply internally during your first year of medical school to the MD PhD program again. Um, I don't know what the acceptance rate for that is, but I, hypothetically that could have been a path for me. Um, U Chicago never heard back from U Michigan. I got rejected. Um, earlier, I don't remember when. Uh, Vanderbilt, I got accepted into. Um, WashU, I declined their interview. Um, and then Try I, the Wa Cornell, um, that was actually the first acceptance I received. I remember that, that was in like mid-December or something. So um, Yale, I was invited to, for an interview, but I declined it, yeah. So overall, um, I applied to, I guess like 25 schools, or I sent primaries to 25 schools. Um, I, uh, let's see, so I, yeah. And then I submitted secondaries to 24 of those. Um, was invited to, I think, you can double check my math, but I think it was 17 interviews. I um, accepted 10 of them, and then I got accepted into nine different programs, um, all US allopathic medicine, like MD programs um, for MSTP training. So yeah, I was really happy about um, kind of the school choices that I had and ultimately I decided to go to UPenn. Um, that's it, yeah. So hopefully that was a helpful video. It's probably gonna be pretty long. Um, at this point, if you stuck around to the end, thank you very much. Um, let me know down in the comments below if you guys have any other things that you'd like me to talk about or go over uh, as it pertains to like my MCAS application cycle or anything else as well. Um, so thank you very much and see you in the next one.